about an about called our Profi Conference. And this event is one of my favorites because we get a chance to talk about how important consistency is when treating with living with hemophilia. And I'm telling you right now, we have some of the best speakers, the most amazing lineup prepared for you. It is really going to be incredible. And uh, this is an online seminar. So you can join us from wherever you are. It's going to be a great opportunity on June 1st and June 2nd. You have to register to attend. And so I want to encourage you to do that right now. You can go onto our website at hope-charities.org and you can register for this event and uh, learn more about it. But it's going to be a great time. We're going to have some great topics that we're going to be covering. I think it's really important um, to really kind of cover some of these things, but it's all about the patient journey. So matter of fact, one of the first sessions we have is by Amber Federizo, who's going to be talking about uh, transitioning to self-care and the patient journey as it, as it approaches from going from really being a teen to an adult, which is going to be super exciting. She's also going to be covering some other things about bone and joint health, which I think is really, really key as it pertains to consistency with your preventative therapy. So you want to make sure that you check that out. We're going to have a great time uh, to connect uh, with Amber again in the afternoon about prophylaxis and the importance of how that came about, but also whether or not women with hemophilia need prophylaxis treatment as well. That's going to be an important moment too. And so a lot of great topics, so many more things, but today I've actually invited Dr. Claudio Sandoval to join me for this pre-event podcast to talk a little bit about session that he's going to be doing. And uh, Dr. Claudio, thanks so much for joining me today. It is great to see you as always. Oh, likewise. It's always great to see you. And, and I've said this before, I think, uh, you know, working with you all has been one of the highlights of my academic career. Really, you just guys are just fabulous. And we've done like three or four sessions together. And each one yeah. has really been a grand slam home run, you know, that bottom of the ninth, seventh game seven of the World Series. Bang, <laughs> we just hit it out of the ballpark, you know. Cool. So true. And and we always love hearing your sessions, too. I, I, I We were just talking about this recently, about how I love so much how you take things that are very, very complex and you boil them down to things that are really easy for anyone to understand. And I know you're going to be doing that at this conference, but you know, some people, this might be their first time hearing of you or seeing you. And so I'd love to give you the opportunity to tell us a little bit about what you do with Octopharma and, and what your background is. Sure, great. So, uh, so I'm Claudio Sandoval. So currently I am the Senior Director of uh, Medical Affairs uh, at Octopharma. But, but I'm also a pediatric hematologist oncologist. And before I joined Octopharma, I had 30 years of experience taking care of children with, uh, with cancer, um, with uh, bleeding disorders, with anemias. So, you know, when I joined Octopharma, I really brought a lot of patient care experience that, mm -hmm. that has now helped me um, uh, with Octopharma in, in helping patients understand, um, you know, not only the, the, the condition that they have, but, but what it means to, to, you know, to be a patient with hemophilia um, and that the disease shouldn't define you, that, you're, you know, you're just a regular person, but I happen to have hemophilia. Uh, or yeah. I happen to have diabetes, or I happen to have this, or it shouldn't define you. So, uh, so we really try to do a lot of education with patients and with healthcare providers, so that you know, so we can empower patients with with knowledge, and then they can seek out the advice from their physicians and see what's good for them. I'm also very big on patient autonomy. You know, we're adults; mm -hmm. no one can tell me what to do, and so I can't tell anyone else what to do. But I, I try to help them make informed decisions. That's so good and so important. I mean, that's one of the things that we're so big on at Hope, trying to help the patients themselves learn as much as possible because I'm a person living with hemophilia. And I can tell you right now, having an informed conversation with my clinicians has actually contributed significantly to the betterment of my overall health and, and my, my joint health. It's, it's actually helped my mental health. It's helped a lot of different ways for me to be able to be empowered. And I didn't go to school to be a doctor, but having people like you explain the in-depth details in a way that I can understand has really been super helpful for me to be able to go back and have an informed conversation with my clinicians. And a lot of times they've even voiced, I'm sure you can, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, speak to this as well, but a lot of people have voiced the fact that they, you know, the, in, in the clinical setting, that they appreciate that I come with educated questions about my own personal care that I've learned through sessions like this. Uh, because it helps to it helps them to make better recommendations even for my care, right? 
Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know what? You know, you don't need a science background. You just need to have that that want, that desire to want to wanna learn. You know, I, I'm not a physicist, but if I have the desire to learn about something, I can read it and, and say, wow, you know, I've gained this fund of knowledge. So I, I really try to make presentations um, easy to understand for folks who, who may not have a science background. And, um, and, you know, and again, they may have a background in something else that allows them because now, you know, we're able to think out of out of context and say, oh, wow, you know what? I have the same kind of application in what I do. Now I'm beginning to understand you better, you know, so that that, that type of stuff. You know, that's so good. Well, you're going to be covering a lot of science at this Profi conference. And I'm really excited about your presentation because, man, there's so much innovation going on right now behind the scenes and various studies and so many different products. I mean, I know I remember as a young adult, there was only four or five products on the market. So you didn't have a, a lot of options. But now there's, I think, 26 and there's more coming. So I, I just am excited to see what's happening. Um, and with all this innovation, and it provides a certain level of complexity, but I, I, I'm, I'm really excited. I think you're going to be talking about more about the new products that are coming out. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. So, you know, um, so I'm, I'm a little bit older than you are, Jonathan. I remember when there was just one product. So, yeah, you know, a, a, right. a patient and, uh, and, um, and the family would come in and it was just basically talking about one product. And then the wow. factor eight gene was cloned. And then that gave us the ability to say, wow, we can now make a factor in, in, in a cell line. And because, and, you know, during the 80s, there were the other H's, HIV and hepatitis, that, that the right. hemophilia population took a hit. And, and you know, and mm. we, we forget that women were also affected, you know, because they're the, they were the spouses of men. And men so, got infected with HIV and hepatitis and then subsequently may have infected their, their wives or, or their true. girlfriends or the fiance. So and, and we, I don't want anyone to forget that. You know, that's yeah. just in recent history. So, so now that we have the ability to clone um, factor A, we can put it into a hamster cell line. That's, what, that's the first thing we did. Then we put it into a human cell line. That's the second thing we did. Then we kind of manipulated the molecule, you know, instead of dressing it up in a bow tie, we dress it up in a, um, in a regular tie. Um, instead of wearing a sports shirt, we, they're wearing the tuxedo, something to jazz it up a little bit. And, and then we came out with a non-factor, you know, an ingenious idea of, of saying, well, if we if we don't really like the factor molecule because it causes an inhibitor, can we put an imposter in there almost? And, and can this imposter not only cover the functions of factor eight, but in coagulation, but what about the other functions of factor eight outside of coagulation? And, and then we, you know, we have some um, therapies that I'm going to talk about that are not FDA approved yet, but, but right around the corner, you know, and soon they will be, you know, perhaps FDA approved this way that the audience can, get like um, almost like a preview, like a trailer for, for that next happening movie that's going to come out on December 25th, you know, so they kind of right. already know that something's coming down the pike. And I think that's important too. That's so good. I'm, I'm really excited about that because um, I think that there are so many, so many innovative things happening, but it's a little confusing, quite honestly, with all these different things going on. So I, I know you're going to bring a lot of clarity to that. And uh, I don't want to give anything away, but I know this session is going to be on June 2nd at 2.15. So if people want to come, they need to definitely register for that. But any any highlights? Are there any uh, any, any big surprises that we might see? Because you're not going to just be talking about uh, Octopharma medications. You're going to be talking about kind of the landscape that's out there, right? Right, exactly. Um, you know, one, one of the things that, that, I mean, I try to do is, is never just to um, push a brand um, you know, in these mm. types of presentations, I think it has to be so that a patient and his or her family can make an informed decision about what's out there. Um, you know, uh, you and I talked about this earlier, how families need to know that there's just more than one treatment. Um, if there's a teenager involved, well, I mean, we should also consider his or her opinion in, in the form of, of an assent. You know, so That's we're going to do a yeah. clinical trial and is a 18, excuse me, a 17 year old boy who is not legally a, uh, uh, an adult. Well, we should get his permission, too. You know, so I think that we, we try to cover all the products in a non-biased way so that folks can really think about it and say, wow, you know what? This is believable. 
as opposed so to good. just pushing one product and then people say, wait a second, wait, 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 wait. This is, you know, there's more, uh, there are more brands of chewing gum out there. And, uh, and, you know, to talk about just one, I think short changes us. And, and that's not yeah. what we want to do. We want to give people a, a panoramic view of, of hemophilia. I love that. I love that. You do such a great job at that. And um, I, I think that's important for people to understand because there's all kinds of people that could attend this session. I mean, obviously, this is really for patient education and empowerment, but there's there's really a 360 degree support system that could potentially listen to this. I oftentimes encourage people that are you know, caregivers like that, maybe, maybe that are not even directly living in the home, but like maybe a, maybe an aunt or an uncle that wants to learn more about how to help their, you know, niece or nephew to learn how to, to support them better. Who, who all do you think should be attending this type of session to learn more about these types of things coming down the pike? Yeah. You know, I think you hit it right on the, uh, the, the nail right on the head, you know, obviously patients, but, but more than that, other family members, I mean, you know, eight-year-old Johnny may want to go visit grandpa and grandma or auntie and, and uncle Jim. Um, and, and, you know, they, they're going to need to know. Um, we talked about social workers, how important, how, what, what an integral part they have played in, 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 um, in caring for uh, folks with hemophilia. Because, so you know, true. it could be a huge financial burden for these families, you yes. know. Um, and so you need a social worker who truly understands the impact of, well, you know, this month we're kind of short and we have an electricity bill, we have rent, we have food. Little Johnny needs a new pair of sneakers, but we have a $2,000 copay. How do, how do we right. navigate through that? Um, right. I, I don't think a, a physician is ever too seasoned not to learn something new, you know? Um, and and wow. even sometimes come in with their own insights and perhaps ask focused questions. Um you know, or even challenging questions. It's always good to get a challenging question. Um, yeah. You know, so that you can um, think about things. And perhaps if you don't have the answer, you can say, you know what? That's a great question. I need to think about it. I will get back to you. So then you develop this relationship with that physician or with that other healthcare provider because you're going to get back to them with a response to their questions. So I think yeah. anyone who even cares about anything about hemophilia should really join us. And, and, and bring your, your experiences, your own knowledge. I, I tell, every time I give a, a presentation, I always tell folks, I really learn more from you all than you learn from me because everyone's experiences are so different. I've heard mm. so many life stories that I tell you, I could write a book on just the life stories of, of folks with hemophilia. So, um, so I think that uh, this is going to be really an exciting conference. Um, and, and, I, and, and as we spoke about early, I'm so looking forward to uh, to getting there and um, and really in, in, in imparting some knowledge and hanging out with you and Porter and the rest of the gang. Yeah, and we're going to have a time for question and answer too, which I think sometimes that's where the best things are learned for all of us is a chance for us to actually in a live setting. I think that that's one of the things sometimes people get confused about these types of, you know, live online events. They think of it in terms of like a webinar, but this is not really a webinar. This is actually an interactive opportunity for people to really ask you questions and to talk about some of the sure. things that matter to them as well. Absolutely. And also, you know, I mean, they may feel intimidated asking their own physicians or, you know, sometimes physicians are so busy. Healthcare providers are so busy you know, they're, they're, they're lotted 15 minutes to see a patient. I mean, after pleasantries, that's already eight minutes is gone, you know? So, right. so this also affords, you know, families and folks to ask a question in a non-intimidating um, environment. Now, I'm, I'm not saying that the healthcare providers are intimidating, but sometimes, you know, the healthcare providers are pressed for time. They got 20, 30 patients to see in, in the mid-morning to mid-afternoon session, and they may not have time to, to answer all the questions. So, so this affords an opportunity to do so, you know? Yeah, that's so great. Well, thank you so much for your passion for our community and just for the opportunity to talk more about this specific topic because I think it's incredibly important. You mentioned several people that I think are important to attend this, patients, caregivers. You mentioned uh, even clinicians, uh, social workers. There's all kinds of people that need to attend this because I think we're going to cover a broad array of things uh, as far as what is coming down the, the pipeline. But thank you so much, most of all, for your passion and for your willingness 
to really take the time to help us to understand because you hit the nail on the head also when you talked about it's important for us to be able to sometimes ask questions in a neutral ground, a neutral setting. So I'm really looking forward to this. And uh, if people want to come, make sure that you register today for this meeting that's going to happen. Actually, this particular session will be on June 2nd at 2.15 Central Standard Time. So Dr. Claudio, thank you so much for being with me today on this Prevent podcast. And Absolutely. we'll look thank forward you. to seeing you soon. Absolutely. Always great seeing you. Take care. Well, if you don't know about these sessions, you can go to our website and learn a lot more about Dr. Claudio's session that's going to be on Friday. But there's a whole list of sessions happening on Thursday, the day before. If you can come to all of them, that's amazing. If you can only come to one or two, man, maybe this one's a session you need to come to. There's also a whole list of those sessions that will be happening right there on our website. So make certain that you go by there right now and click on the link below and register at hope-charities.org. You'll see the link right there on the homepage and you'll be able to click on that and actually sign up for this free event. We're also going to have a lot of fun while we're there. We're giving away a lot of prizes uh, in every breakout session. We'll be giving away $25, $50 and a $75 gift card. There's a lot of opportunity for you to win some fun, have some fun and win some prizes. So that'll be a lot of fun. And if you have any questions ahead of time, you can always email us right here at events at hope-charities.org. And we would love to be able to, um, you know, help you understand maybe any questions that you have about the sessions or topics or speakers or who can attend or why can they attend or who can win prizes. And so uh, really excited about all of that. But once again, I want to say a big thank you to Dr. Claudio and for Octopharma sponsoring this uh, really special patient education opportunity. And uh, I certainly hope to see you there. So make sure you go and register right now. So it's great to see you. And uh, we'll talk to you again very, very, very soon. June 1st, 2nd, register right now.